For this cotangent graph, we see that there's a negative outside, so this is one that is going to be a flip, so we do have to deal with that later. Let's first find our period and phase shift. Period is always pi over the number in front of the x. So in this case, it's going to be pi over 2. The phase shift, because it's a cotangent, is just going to be c over b is the formula. The c has to be always after a minus sign, so this we can write as minus a negative, and so essentially you're taking the opposite sign of that. It's going to be negative pi over 3 divided by the number in front of the x. So it's c over b we just did there, and we get negative pi over 6 as your phase shift. The phase shift is always going to be your first key point that you have. So let's write that up here. PS phase shift is negative pi over 6. Now to find the other ones, we have to find our half point. Okay, so half point is going to be always period divided by 2. The period is pi over 2, and you're dividing it by 2. So when you flip that, it's going to give you pi over 4. Now, we notice that we have phase shift and half point. Both of them have two different denominators. It's always best if you can get those to be the same denominator. That'll make it easier when you add with common denominators later. They'll automatically have the common denominators. If you look at 4 and 6, the smallest number that both of those will go into evenly is going to be 12. So for this one, I'm going to multiply this by 2 over 2 and get negative 2 pi over 12 as the phase shift. The half point here, I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 3 over 3 to get 3 pi over 12. Now I have both of these have the same denominator. It's going to be easier to add these together now. We're going to start with our phase shift, negative 2 pi over 12. And every time we're going to add 3 pi over 12 to it all the way through. So let's find the other key points. This time we will write them down because we're dealing with fractions here. Start with this, negative 2 pi over 12, and I'm adding 3 pi over 12 to it. Okay. So if I add 3 pi over 12 to it, we're going to get positive pi over 12, and then we're just going to keep adding 3 pi over 12 each time to get the other key points. Okay, so pi over 12 plus 3 pi over 12 is 4 pi over 12. And then we just keep adding that. Going to add another 3 pi over 12 to that. Again, that's our half point. 7 pi over 12. And then 7 pi over 12, we'll add another 3 pi over 12 to it. And we get 10 pi over 12. All right, so now we have this one. This is our first key point, And then we have these. So let's put those down. Down here, we start with the negative one, negative 2 pi over 12, and then we're just going to add the other ones to it, pi over 12, 4 pi over 12, 7 pi over 12, and then 10 pi over 12. We have to put our vertical axis in there, and so it's going to be, for this, I'm going to draw it right here. It's going to be a little bit closer to this one than it is for that one, because that's minus 2 pi. We can just draw that in there. The first key point, your phase shift, the third one, and the last one are the ones that get the vertical asymptotes. We have a 2 in front, and the 2 is going to be a vertical stretch. So let's put 2 here and 2 there on that one. Now, as far as the direction is concerned here, the direction on that, cotangent normally will fall as you go from left to right. However, as I mentioned earlier, you've got a negative in front, so negative means that you have to flip the graph. So the graph flips this direction, flips like that. So instead of going down like that, it's going to be increasing, so it's actually going to resemble a tangent graph in a way for the direction. The halfway point here is where it's going to be at the level of 2. So halfway point between here, that's 2. Halfway between here, it's going to be down there at negative 2. Same with this. For this one, it's going to be down here. 
and then between these two, it's going to be up there. Now, the reason why I'm drawing them like this and not like the other way, because the other way would be if it's falling, but I want these to be increasing. So I put the lower one down here and, and the other one here. I know the graph is going to be looking like that in that direction. So here it's going to go through here. It's going to hit this point and go up and look like that. The other one is going through here, it's going to hit this, and then go up and look like that. So this is now what your final graph is going to look like. They do look like tangent graphs because, again, the negative outside is what does that. The two that's there, that ended up being a vertical stretch.